many of you, maybe when you hear about uh, ZK snarks and more generally snarks, uh, you think, oh man, there's so, so many different constructions. Uh, if you have to learn about Moonmath to kind of uh, uh, understand how they work, maybe some of them actually literally use magic. So I want to kind of push back on this uh, narrative of an imp or, or impression and say that really like anything complicated that we design, underneath it all there is actually rather simple uh, paradigms and design principles uh, that uh, sort of construct something complicated or something simpler, okay? And um, I'm gonna try in, in um, just very few slides to just point out how even a day with many topics like today, in reality, um, you know, can be understood uh, as, uh, as a, a sort of a small set of design principles, okay? Uh, <coughs> oh, just to remind you, ZK Snarks are cryptographic proofs for computation integrity that are super sure and super fast to verify. Uh, these are actually things that are not particularly new from a, a, a sort of feasibility perspective. Already in the 1990s, uh, we had uh, powerful results from computational complexity and cryptography that basically told us uh, things like ZK Snarks uh, we understand how to construct, at least in principle. And the reason why we're here is that in the last 10 years, there's been extraordinary progress in uh, sort of in the, in the cryptographic foundations, efficient constructions, implementations, and you know, most notably applications. That's why you know, many of us care about ZK snarks in this area. And kind of the view that maybe, you know, some of you that entered the blockchain space, uh, maybe early in the day, you thought, okay, this is all about uh, this peer-to-peer -peer protocols with strong uh, uh, consensus. Today, the view that we have is more like that uh, uh, constructing peer-to-peer -peer protocols with uh, strong security and privacy guarantees uh, uh, really constantly also leans on the strong guarantees of ZK Snarks, okay? This is, is an important pillar of this type of systems that is gonna, probably gonna stick around for a while. Uh, <clears throat> so for today, I wanna maybe remind you just briefly the picture of a ZK Snark. It's gonna be helpful to have a mental sort of uh, representation of w what it looks like, so with the prover and the verifier. Uh, the prover has a particular function uh, that is applying to a public input and a private uh, input. So X is the public input, W is the private input, and it wants to convince the verifier, indeed many other people, that uh, uh, he knows the secret input so that F of X and W equals one. And naturally the prover is gonna run in time that is proportional to the computation, but crucially uh, the proof that attests to the correctness of the computation is gonna be much, much spo smaller than the computation itself, exponentially smaller. And the verification sometimes is linear in the computation itself, so this is kind of the non-succinct verification, or it is very fast, this is what we call succinct verification. Either of these things uh, are sort of interesting objects, but the important point of a succinct and interactive argument is that the proof is small. Uh, and crucially, these proofs can be verified by anybody, so if you kind of write them down somewhere in a transaction, then many of the nodes in the network can read them. Uh, I also get asked, asked many times, you know, what's the difference between a snark and a snark? So the K at the end simply denotes that uh, there is this technicality uh, in, the, in the security guarantee of a snark that really you don't want to know just a secret input exists, but whoever produced the proof actually knows it, okay? This is a technical notion in cryptography that we, know, that we call uh, uh, argument of knowledge, okay? So that's what it means. And ZK in front stands for zero knowledge. And then obviously if you have a ZK snark, it means it satisfies both properties. Most applications that you are probably familiar with require both properties, uh, both zero knowledge and argument of knowledge. For today specifically, it will be helpful to remember that uh, every snark actually requires a setup. Uh, so we sometimes say snarks without setup, that actually is, uh, they don't exist. One can prove they don't exist. It's really a matter of uh, discussing what's that setup you're using. The most type, the most benign type of setup is something called a uniform reference string. It's just pure randomness, okay? So the setup consists of a string that is guaranteed to be random and everybody knows. And this string is used for producing and validating proofs. Uh, so this is kind of like the gold standard of a setup. But really instead, what we've been using in practice so far is uh, this uh, uh, so-called circuit-specific or function-specific setup where you have to conduct a procedure offline that depends on the function you want to run to produce a so-called reference string. It's like some collection of cryptographic parameters 
that uh, will work for validating and for producing validating proofs only for, this func for these functions. Today, we have a program in the morning that is uh, around the goal of so-called universal setup. This means that this one-time trusted procedure will depend only on upper bound, on the, on the sort of uh, sizes of computations we care about, but then it will be able to support any function or any circuit that up to a certain size, okay? Anyway, the punchline for this, for this slide, just remember, all SNARKs must have a setup. Without them, you can prove they do not exist, okay? It's only a matter about what kind of setup, all right? The gold standard is uniform. Sometimes we can't get there, and, it's, and then you have to have something, some other thing. The pl many deployed solutions are about specific setups. Today, we're gonna hear about constructions that use universal setup, okay? The advantage is that you can run the cryptographic ceremony once and for all, okay? All right. So this is about, this is the mental picture I keep in my head when I think about snarks. I find it rather helpful. I uh, hope you find it useful as well uh, in terms of sort of syntactic, uh, sort of uh, you know, which boxes uh, do what, okay? Um, all right. So today we have, um, you know, many constructions. I'm gonna click and you're gonna see a table that comes up with many constructions tabulated according to properties. It's gonna look scary for a moment, okay? So click. So here it is. Uh, <coughs> so I've tabulated uh, multiple, so these are not all SNARK constructions that we might care about, there are many recent ones. What I've done is I've split across constructions that rely on a uniform setup, this is you know, pure randomness in the sky, versus this structured setup, either universal or circuit specific, okay? In the other direction, I, I am discriminating according to whether the verification procedure is fast or not. Okay, so here you have linear verification procedure, so it, even though the proof is small, it will take you a linear amount of time to check the proof. Or if it's fast, you could ask, is it fast for all circuits or just for circuits that, have, that are nice, they have like nice structure, for example, repeated circuits, okay? Okay, why, why did I put this table on the slide? First, you know, I wanna, I wanna share, I wanna point out that you can always, by definition, tabulate constructions. You know, you just list the properties and you write them, you know, a table for it. So there's nothing special about being able to tabulate things. However, what I want to highlight is that th wh while this may look like, you know, a complex uh, 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 sort, of a sort of landscape, in reality, the way we achieve these constructions is from a small set of design principles. So specifically, there are three main compilers, okay, that the compilers, these are transformations that combined simpler ingredients to construct each of these sort of families of constructions. The one on the right, for example, uh, GRAT16, what is currently used, for example, in Sapling, okay, is an example of a construction that is obtained by combining so-called linear proofs, or you know, linear PCPs, doesn't matter right now, and linear encodings. These linear encodings are obtained from pairings, okay, and pretty much, all of these constructions, you can explain them as different ways of like instantiating linear proofs and linear encodings, okay? So it's like they're all part of the same family. So once you understand one, you basically understand all of them, okay? This other family of constructions relies on combining two things, polynomial commitment schemes that we'll hear about later today and algebraic proofs. These, again, these are probabilistic proofs that uh, uh, we're, the, we're proving, where the prover uh, sort of puts down only, let's say, low-degree polynomials. It doesn't matter right now what they are. The point is that it explains a whole lot of constructions here. And whether you fall on the left or on the right or like up here or down there, depends on what type of algebraic proofs you use and also what types of polynomial commitment, polynomial commitment schemes you use. For instance, you can build polynomial commitment schemes also from bilinear groups, but you can also use just generic groups you can use groups of unknown order, and depending upon how you instantiate these things, you will kind of fall in different parts of this picture, okay? And finally, there's another compiler that puts together algebraic proofs and low degree tests, again, whatever those are, and cryptographic hash functions, and you get sort of this, this uh, 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 um, those constructions. So this is the non-trivial part of putting the table down, right? Y yes, you can always tabulate a bunch of constructions, but my point here is that 
All these constructions have many things in common, okay? So if you are interested to understand or implement you know, some of these schemes, my advice would be to uh, be mindful of, uh, a, of uh, a, um, be aware of that uh, under, there is this underlying you know, simple structure, okay? Five minutes, yeah, okay. Any questions or? I like in, like all in rapt attention and like you know, can move some of your muscles if you want. <laughs> um, all right. So that's pretty kind of the main point of my. Uh, oh yeah, I also want to mention that as far as we know, a really nice question is in general to uh, uh, um, also achieve post quantum constructions. Unfortunately, right now the only post quantum constructions I'm aware of fall in this category, mostly because we have good cryptographic hash functions that are post quantum. Remains a good a good problem too. Uh, have more post-quantum constructions. Uh, I want to make, so this is maybe the only other slide that requires uh, some thinking. I want to try to get it across. Uh, this issue about when is it possible to have a fast verifier or not is rather subtle. I want to try to kind of uh, highlight uh, 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 this point. So A snark verifier that runs exponentially faster recomputation, whether that is possible or not, depends on what computations you're willing to consider and what, you know, kind of what type of snark you have. So let me try to explain that. So maybe many of you are familiar with you know, program computations, right? So you have a machine or like you know, some specification about programming, and you say, hey, here's an input, here's a number of cycles you run. You know, please run some, some amount of time and either accept or reject. Okay, so the machine computation is going to look like this. The main point is that the specification of your, co of your computation is much smaller than the computation itself. Okay, so for example, you can say, take this hash function, repeat it a million times, and, ch and see whether the output uh, contains, I don't know, like uh, five zeros. When you construct SNARG for you know, these machine computations, the verifier needs to, at, at the very least, read the statement that is checking. In this case, the statement that is checking is much smaller than the computation. Therefore, it is OK to ask the verifier, would you mind running in time that is proportional to the description of the computation, not the size of the computation? OK? This is to say, one way you can achieve fast verification for a SNARG is you focus on the computations that, say, arise from machine computations. The description is much smaller than the computation size. This is in contrast to circuit computations that maybe many of you are much more familiar with because you even program circuits or constraint systems, where you say, here's a circuit. What is a circuit? A list of gates. You, here they are, one after the other, okay? Such that once you, you know, evaluate the circuit you know, on these inputs, you get zero. The point here is that now the circuit, description of the circuit in general is as large as the computation itself. So therefore, later when you, when you have a snarg for circuits, you might wonder how could it ever be the case that we can expect the verification, verification uh, uh, algorithm to run in time sublinear in the circuit. At the very least, the verifier should know about the circuit. And there is no smaller description in the circuit itself. So today, you will hear about many snarks for circuits or constraint systems where verification is fast. So what's going on? The point is that all of these are so-called pre-processing snarks. There is an offline procedure that produces mm, a verification key that depends on the circuit. Okay, and this is a small kind of summary of the circuit. It's a cryptographic summary that is done ex ante, okay? And then you can use it many times to check many proofs relative to the same circuit, okay? So this is an important difference to keep in mind, okay? Because at this point, we have actually in production snarks in different projects that fall in different categories. You have fast verification through pre-processing of circuits or fast verification because you have computations with structure, okay? All right, I'll just uh, <coughs> conclude uh, by pointing out that Today also we have not only talks about backends, which are kind of argument systems for different languages, whether it is uh, constr circuits, constraints, or any of these uh, sort of newer languages. Sometimes you are worried about 
reducing from high-level languages to lo low-level languages. This is done through reductions, like, you know, like NP reductions. Uh, some of you are familiar with projects like Bellman or Socrates or, or Snarky. And these are all like ways in which you can take represent, you know, specifications written in some, some reasonably high-level form, right? And <coughs> you take them down. This is in contrast with some more recent projects. For example, you'll hear about Airscript today that are targeting these other languages. These are basically machine specifications, okay? They're algebraic machine specifications. And the way you kind of do these so-called succinct reductions is rather distinct from the way you program circuits, okay? Just be aware of the difference. This difference is not subjective. Underneath, there are complexity theoretic reasons for why this is the case. Here, you're doing NP reductions between NP complete problems. Here, you're reducing you know, whatever you have in mind, so either P space or next complete problems. So these are really distinct types of reductions. Uh, and again, you'll hear about the script today. Okay, that's all, all I really wanted to say. If you wanna learn about more about cryptography, I, I always would like to uh, 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 sort of, I think Dan Bonnet has a great online course about this, cryptography in general. Uh, if you wanna learn more about computational complexity, it's a great book by Sinji Valor and Boaz Borak. If you want to learn about probabilistic proofs, actually, uh, this past spring I taught a course in uh, PCPs and interactive proofs where I go over some of these things. And if you go to this uh, uh, um, URL, there is you know, 25 recorded lectures. Thank you.